are on the trail portion finally, coming out of the snow line. Allie's acting pretty good with her feet, so I didn't boot her up. And like I said, those boots don't really stay on very well any anyhow. So I think she's good to go. If she starts whining or something, that'd be a good indication. Mr. Crockett. This has been fun. <laughs> <laughs> I almost totally pitched it in the mud, dude. It has been fun. Hard it's, work, too, it's too. It's been hard work. It's been wet. But you know what? Overall, it's, it has been fun. Yeah. It's been enjoyable. Kind of sucks at times, but... <laughs> Checks. Do you want to go sledding down that hill or no? Don't hold back and don't tell me what you think I want to hear. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I think it'd be fun, but Okay. No. With what we got going, it's not a sunny, pretty day. It's no. cold and wet and miserable. No. I'm with you, dude. <laughs> we were gonna go sledding down that glacier. I brought some poly, uh, poly sheets with us for our sleds. I'm with Crockett on this. We're just gonna pack it on back. And dude, we have so much work ahead of us, cleaning our gear. We've been talking about that, going home, and everything is soaked. You gotta take care of it. It's gonna crap out on you. That's right. Knives gotta be cleaned and dried yep. and oiled. Yep. Tent's got to be aired out. I got to dehair everything from Dogness. Thank you very much. I wouldn't trade her for the world though. I'll take the hair. Yeah, we got lots of work ahead of us. I sure like hiking down rather than hiking up. Sometimes I can't use my poles when I'm like filming and stuff. Straight on, didn't we? Up there? Yeah. yeah, we didn't hit the switchback. much better traction. It's got nature snowshoe built into her paws. Webbed feet too. Another reason I went with a black lab. Good mountain dog. Good girl. When you choose your dog, if you want them to do stuff like this, I would go with a hardy breed. There's lots of good ones. I went with a lab for several reasons. They're water capable, they have webbed feet, they have naturally good dispositions, they're sweet. You almost have to ruin a lab with your training to make them a bad dog. But you, they do need to be trained. I spent a lot of time with Allie, so she's well mannered and interfaces with people and other animals as well. And also to get her confidence level up in this stuff. When I call her Allie the Mountain Dog, that's not a joke. It's what she's trained for. It's what her confidence level's for. Her self-esteem is built up for this. Her weekly physical regime is built up for this. As best I can, Allie the Mountain Dog. She loves getting out. She loves coming in the mountains. She's at her happiest when she's out with dad hiking like this. She get tired just like we do. There's Crockett out yonder. 
he was taking some pictures. Uh, and she'll have to get rested up just like she did last night. And she's good to go again. As you can see, she loves looking at critters. All the sights and smells of the woods. Look at that sight right there. Isn't that beautiful? I don't have her bell activated right now. Because I don't want it uh, going off all the time. Scaring what chances we might have of seeing some moose, elk, maybe some mountain goat. Chances are they'll spot us and her long before we would ever see them. Nose is always going. Check that out. It's a fossil shell in the shale right there. It's pretty cool. Look at that, man. She wants to get going again. You and Al, you're in there somewhere, nothing. <laughs> Here's a quick 360 degree, nothing, 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 and you're down there. All right, Crockett's caught up to us. He got some sh cool shots from the cliff as we're hiking down. We'll integrate those. And uh, we're on our final hike out. We've seen a few unprepared hikers, haven't we, Crockett? Several. Coming on down this trail as we're hiking down, several were just wearing cotton tops, jersey tops, very little water, no Gore-Tex, no shelter with them. I don't know, guys, when you come out in this, uh, come prepared, that's what I say. And I always say to Crockett, come ready to spend the night. Maybe maybe several nights in this type of environment. Most of the time I go on day hikes just because of time. But I'll tell you, I go out, and maybe, you know, I don't bring a tent with me, but I plan on spending the night. Or I should say I prepare that if I get hurt or I get stuck somewhere, I'm spending the night. Amen. Amen. Go ahead. What were you saying? Um, you know, I wouldn't be... On a day hike, if I had to spend the night, you know, I wouldn't be super comfortable, but I've got a light sleeping bag, I've got a tarp, and I've always got a way to start a fire. There's no way I'll go out somewhere without being able to start a fire in those other items. Preach it, brother. I agree. And uh, like I said, snow cruise, surviving is not necessarily being comfortable, but you're basically maintaining your body core temperature to where you don't go into uncontrollable shaking in hypothermic conditions. You stay as warm and dry as you can in the conditions with equipment you have. Do you throw your rain gear in the washer and dryer? Do you hose it off sometimes? My pants are so muddy, I'm gonna hose them off. Then I'm gonna go through a full wash cycle on them. I might nick wax them too, maybe not. I'll probably just throw them in the washer, dry them, call it good. I'll have to see the Scortex top might be okay without doing it. It's not dirty, it's just wet. 
I will definitely tumble it in the dryer because that tends to bring out the DWR as much as it can be brought out. All right, we got to get this. What's up? All right, we got the Great Dane hiker coming back down. What happened, dude? Uh, just white. After about you guys, I went out of sight from you guys. Yeah, we watched you. The clouds just set in, started snowing, and total I, white out. White out. I couldn't see nothing. That's what we had last night. Yeah, and I got I got into the basin. I I knew I got in the basin because I was just yelling, you know, and checking my echoes. Wow. And then uh, finally the the sun hit and it kind of rose a little bit and I could tell that I was in there but I still didn't see nothing but white. Good call dude so, coming yeah, back down awesome. we were wondering about you yeah well, kind of worried about you actually. I'm worried about the other guy did you see him? Yeah the There's guy in the red. One. Yeah he's uh, did came, he keep going up? Back down 45 minutes it took me to get up you know and he's going I was like all right bud and it just kept getting worse. Oh no. So I was like well that's no good but but you know what? We ta we good. talked to him, didn't we? Said, hey, dude, you got to know when to turn around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he, he when, I, when I did, I got into the base. I did two big old circles around this uh, rock pillar, and I thought I was going in a straight line. Wow. And I was like, well, it's time to go home. You are a smart <laughs> yeah, man. Not I'm not going to the summit this weekend. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm gonna go home. There's always another weekend. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah. We had the same call last night up on that yeah. that glacier. We're that like, glacier, nah. Yeah. We're, we're, we're out of here. And I, and I did coming down, I caused two uh, avalanches. Mm. The snow was only about that deep that started, you know, and came down, but wow. if, you would, if you would have been on a couple hundred uh, foot slope, it would have been ugly at the bottom. We were worried about that too, about the snow falling, and because the snow mass is stable, but with new snow? That new snow on there dude, is just- not so much. Yeah, it, it's it goes, slick. goes quick. Do I have your permission to use you in my YouTube video? Yeah. Yeah. Cool, because this sure. this is an adventure. I'm nothing fancy. The gear reviewer, that's Crockett 20. So we're up here. I, I'm glad to see you, man, because yeah. we saw you cr cranking up there like, God, maybe we're kind of some pussies or something. <laughs> 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 but I felt good about our decision. I did too. It was like, dude, it was the right call. And it was at dark, too, and that started oh, happening. Yeah, you don't want yeah, you don't want to do that. With lightning and thunder that. last night, too, really? as we're up towards that. the top there. Yeah. Bye, guys. So when you got up top, it was pretty much, uh, I'm, I'm thinking even to go to Summit, it's technical. Oh, yeah, for what I got, for what I went through to get to the basin, because it was, I didn't see the trail. I, when I waved at you guys, I was on the dirt trail. Right. I found a patch, you know, about as far as you can see right here. But after that, it was just, just snow, and so I just started traversing back up the yeah. cliffs and everything, and so. That's the problem we had yesterday because we we lost a trail in the snow and then you're just kind of on your own. Yeah. And I I didn't load my previous uh, you know track in my GPS, GPS. which would have been so helpful. Yeah. So there you are. I didn't I, bring mine. I didn't bring my GPS at all because I've hiked it so many times. I was just like, well, if I get to where I can't see what's going on, I'm not going to rely on my GPS anyway. I'll just come home. Yeah. And there, so. that's exactly what you did. Yeah. Are you prepared to spend the night? No, no. I could spend the night if I wanted to. And I mean, like in a survival situation. Yeah, in a survival situation, I could. Yeah, but I'm not not in any more comfortable, you know, with the tent and everything. Hmm. We we're just talking yeah, about that. I mean, that's exactly what we we're just talking about. But on a day hike, you kind of got a your plan B is to you might have to stay the night. You won't be comfortable, but you can survive it. Yeah, yeah. I got I got gear to stay stay the night. So. Cool. Yep. That's an accomplished hiker. Yep. All right, brother. I'm glad to see you come yeah. down safe. Take care. Hey, nice guys. to meet you, man. We'll see you down there, maybe. Hey, what can I, uh, how can I find your video? Nothing fancy. N U T N F A N C Y. Okay. All you got to do is Google it, watch for it. It'll probably be called Glacier Call. Glacier. Okay, sounds good. See you, brother. Welcome, That's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. Vindication, right? Yeah. And that's cool that some random guy comes down and everything we've talked about just validates everything. Exactly. I mean, so it's just not us talking. I mean, you heard it. And he's an experienced outdoorsman, yep. obviously. Yep. Uh, and he made the right call, too. Yes. I hope that guy in the red does the same. Yeah. Well, he said he, he was, sounded pretty good about it. We, we've been worrying about this other hiker we saw. We didn't put him on camera. And uh, he seemed prepared. I mean, he was geared up and stuff, but he was pressing towards the summit. And yeah. You know, I, I, I'm never one to like weigh into someone's capabilities because I don't know what they are. But we did tell them it got very technical and very serious up in the higher elevations. 
And he's like, yeah, I'll turn around if it gets gnarly. So that's the conversation we just had. Very cool. Fools you down here, don't it, Crockett? Yes, it does. Down D here, it's just, you know, it's chilly. It's not bad, nice. You go up, different story. <laughs> it gets serious. <laughs> Crockett and I are talking too. We're actually saying, man, I'm kind of glad we didn't all go all the way to the summit because it's a shorter hike out. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> As it is, we have almost five miles we're hiking out. Had we gone all the way to the top, we would have had a good eight. Yeah. Uh, maybe even longer. For, actually, no, it would have been longer than that. If we would have summited, probably about nine-ish. One way coming out There's in this. elevation, too, in this five miles. It's not a you know, rolling five miles, either. It's a lot of elevation. Yeah, so we went five miles in. We're doing five miles back today. And then the elevation, like Crockett's saying, and the snow, like yesterday night, uh, makes it seem like 20. What were you saying just now, dude? And we were just talking about heading up, continue on that path. And I just started thinking about the gear I have. I have no poles. I have no ice axe, which I think would come in handy up top. And crampons would be nice, too, because the further you get up there, I think the nastier it's going to get. And uh, to go up, dumb decision. To make that decision to continue up, stupidity. Yeah, roger that. You can get yourself in a position where you can't descend anymore. Right. You're stuck. Right. Just like we were talking about on the glacier last night. Make the glacier call. Yep. Good points. Giddy up, dog. Giddy up. All right, dude. Here we are. Fresh in your mind. Hike complete. I think we want to name it Glacier Call. Cool. We made the call on the glacier. Keeping it safe. Lessons learned, Crockett. Lessons learned. There's adventures and there's adventures. <laughs> this was an adventure. For me personally, um, you know, some guys might make fun of the, uh, the glove thing or the lack of glove, the socks, but I'll tell you. What I learned from that is in a pinch, remember, you can do that. Um, and this type, maybe I shouldn't have tried changing my gear setup. This wasn't the setting to do that. On a day hike, maybe, something would be better that way. Um, this. <laughs> you know, I've been meaning to get one. Um, and this, you know, it did okay, but it's a pain. And I need to get a dedicated rain cover for my pack. And we were working that rain cover on this trip, were we not? Yes, we were. Yes, we were. Uh, for me, too, it was kind of miserable getting up in the morning and putting on wet pants. Everything was soaked. It was soaked. So it would have been nice to have a dry pair to put on. Uh, you know, it's debatable if you want to carry that extra weight or not. But if you get a nice, good, lightweight pair of pants, hey, you're golden. What else did I learn? How do you keep stuff dry, though? I mean, you can bring up a very good dry sack and really stow it away. That adds weight, though. A good dry sack. Not the kind you have. I think I'm talking military grade dry sack will yeah. add four ounces yeah. to your loadout. Yeah. Other than that, you're gonna get your crap wet. Yep. At least damp. I kept all my clothing in this compartment, buried deep underneath my rain cover, amongst uh, many or behind many layers, and it actually stayed pretty dry. Uh, it was damp, a little bit damp. You know, I think that plays to the type of material you have. Cotton. Am I gonna bring a cotton sweatshirt up? That's gonna stay wet. And it's gonna. You're be crazy if you bring. Heavy. So, you know, yeah. yeah, think about gear purchases. What type of material are you going to get? Check out the back of the truck, dude. <laughs> we got a lake back here. Look at that, man. There's like a shell casing rusting away back there. 223 Wolf, underwater, rusting away. Nice. Um, lessons that I've learned, and I learn every time I come out, Crockett, if you want to film. Yeah, gotcha. I always prepare for worst case. On this hike, we had worst case. And that is where we had visibility dropping to near zero conditions, rain, snow, sleet, uh, thunder, and lightning. As we were coming up on the top of that glacier, glacier also weighing in our decision to uh, maybe not attempt the summit on this trip. Um, my hiking poles, they have a ferrule that's busted. I was thinking, ah, they're okay not okay. It kept collapsing on me. Fix your gear. If you think there's something that's amiss, take time to fix it. Uh, I could have done a better job actually getting my legs in shape for this hike. Um, that makes two of us. You know, because my legs were not ready. I mean, we, we did it. You saw us hiking, dude. We're getting it done, me and Crockett. But I was not in a comfortable position where 
if I've been doing a lot of hiking and my quads are really set, um, I'm not I'm not there on this hike. And I said that at the outset that uh, you know I'm just not. Uh, the reason is is you know it's hard to make time. You know because every time you come out and do a hike like this, preparatory hikes is what I call them. You know there's a day. You know less videos, less family time. Your jobs that you're working. Same for Crockett. He's busy. He's got a family. Anyways, that's just a lesson that drove home to me. Uh, other than that, my gear that I ran with, I was pretty happy with. You know, your Gore-Tex gets wet. It's just the nature of the beast. I love the rain uh, cover that I had. The tent, the Gunnison 2, not an Alpine tent. Um, I prefer to have something more four seasony. y uh, Maybe my, uh, one of my Sierra designs would have been best. But it worked, as you can see. Um, my headlamp, I loved it. The night core, that was good. The blades rocked. Um, I didn't show you, but I also had an Almar Eagle. It's buried underneath the rain pants here. And then also a Spyderco Dragonfly under there. Uh, so a couple refinements in my system as well. More, more uh, as a reminder to me, get in shape, man. Get in shape. Especially for this pack. Crockett knows how heavy this pack is, dude. I, most of it's food. I got two MREs in there, too, that I never ate. <laughs> but the nice thing about MREs, man, you just pour some water in that heater, instant hot food. And it could have been a player up there. That's it. From Allie the Mountain Dog, Crockett 20, and Nettin' Fancy, thanks for coming along. This was Glacier Call. We'll do it again sometime. Peace. Conditions like this, you're gonna get soaked. The weight carried. <laughs>